Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. After one week away on holiday and avoiding 24-hour news channels, I was feeling incredibly positive about the world. But one day back here in the UK, and I'm already being bombarded with news around the dreaded B word. That's right, Brexit. What an embarrassing mess that has turned out to be. And But have no fear, I'm not going to be talking about that. This is a Brexit-free zone. And I'm going to try and start my day by avoiding any negative news that are essentially about things that are just beyond my control. Who needs to start your day that way by getting angry about things you can do nothing about? So on this Daily Tech Podcast, how about we just focus on how technology is making the world a better place and even solving a few real world problems along the way too? After all, I'm a solutions, not a problems kind of guy. And today we have Matt Stevens on the show, and he's the CEO of AppNetta, which is a provider of the only network performance monitoring solution that can deliver deep, actionable, end-to-end network performance data, but from the end-user perspective. And Matt also has some incredibly valuable insights and experiences to share on a few other areas in business and technology too. So we've got a lot of ground to cover in today's episode. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Boston so we can speak with Matt Stevens, CEO of AppNetta, on to today's show. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Well, thanks, Neil. Thanks for uh, making time for me today. My name is Matt Stevens, and I'm... uh, Very fortunate to be the co-founder and CEO of a company here in Boston, U.S., named AppNetta. And uh, my my band and I have been focusing on uh, a really interesting problem that I look forward to talking to you and your listeners about that centralizes on the world of end-user experience and network performance. I'm glad you said that, because my understanding is AppNetta is a provider of the only network performance monitoring solution that actually delivers deep, actionable, end-to-end performance. That again, end-to-end network performance data from end-user perspective. But can you just help set the scene a little and tell the listeners more about the kind of problems that you solve for your customers and ultimately what makes AppNetta unique from all those other solutions out there? Yeah, sure. That It, it is a mouthful, quite honestly. Yeah. And it's interesting when you think about the world of network performance or more broadly network performance management. It's it's certainly something that's been around for a very long time, and it's and it's easy for uh, an uninitiated to, to do a little bit of an eye roll and think, oh, yeah, networks like, boy, that's been done a million times over again. In reality, it's getting to be very, very different and distinct today because when you think about the enterprise today and what fuels the enterprise, it's the knowledge worker. And in order to let the knowledge worker be productive and drive true change and growth in the business, they're using business critical applications. And it's really the end user experience of these expensive distributed business critical applications that are that are driving the business. And when their apps are not performing, the knowledge workers' performance suffers and therefore the business suffers. So AppNetta is really built around allowing the business to have what we call a preactive view of their end users experience of their business critical applications and the underlying networks that support these apps. Because at the end of the day, you know, people don't build apps to run networks. You build networks to run apps. And it's our job at AppNetta to constantly understand the performance, the end user performance of these apps. And the minute that it falls underneath what the business determines to be a successful performance level, it's our job to say, here's why, here's where, and here's how you remediate it quickly. And I think it's also worth highlighting that AppNetter technology also provides an end-to-end application monitoring, ultimately to deliver a better end-user experience. And whether that be, that user experience be a Marriott guest trying to check out or an employee in a remote office. So are, are there any use cases or real-life scenarios that you can offer that will help people listening just understand how it actually will work and how it fits together in their world? Yeah, certainly, Neil. It's really interesting. When you think about the term end-to-end, everybody has a different perspective what that means. In AppNetta's view and in the view of our customers today, 
end-to-end -end really means from the place wherever that app is being consumed, be it a, a mobile phone at a Starbucks, whether that be a laptop in a remote office, whether that be at a centralized headquarters office, to whatever location is hosting that business critical application. It might be in your data center. It might be a mixture of your data center and some other co-location in some form of a hybrid hosting location, or you may have jumped full, full force into public cloud or SaaS. Really doesn't matter from our perspective. End to end means wherever you are and wherever the app is and everything in between. So it could be the Wi-Fi connection in your home office. It could be the cable network that supports your office that going over a third party carrier, going up into something like Salesforce, understanding the Salesforce carriers network, then the Salesforce internal network, finally down to the absolute server that's hosting your Salesforce session. AppNetta, when we say end to end, we mean the true end to end. And that's a term, frankly, that gets overused in the industry. And we think that if you're gonna measure end user experience, you better do it from where the user is actually working if you want to get a picture for the way they experience the application. And although you are a tech company, I love how you're a people first, technology second. So can you tell me more about your story and how you learned to be successful, even in a tough startup environment? You actually need to continuously deliver on people too. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really good point. And it's something that, you know, frankly, we're all smarter as we get more experience. And in my case, you know, I started out very focused on technology. I've been a CTO. In fact, when I co-founded AppNetta, I was CTO of, of AppNetta before I moved into the CEO role back in 2014. And it's easy when you come from a technology background to think that when you think of the critical three-legged stool of technology and customers and, and uh, people to kind of bubble technology near the top of that stack. And over the years, uh, and it's taken me a while to realize this, it really does boil down to people because the best way to take care of your customers, especially if you're a SaaS-based offer like I am, is to deliver them delightful technology that exceeds their expectation. And in order to support those customers and to build the technology, it takes an incredible team. So the fundamental layer which now seems obvious, although I have many debates with many of my, my colleagues in the industry who think that customers are the top of the stack, I actually think that you have to focus on your employees and your team first in order to take care of the other two. And as long as you take care of the team, then you're empowered and you've got the resources and the commitment and the com combined mission to go after the customers. And of course, technology comes and goes, whatever the solution is, is needed if you've got the team and you've got the innovation and you've got the, the spirit to go after whatever is needed for the customers, then the technology can take care of itself. And while I have you on the show, I feel we must talk about your leadership role as well, because after experiencing several merger and acquisition deals in your time as a leader, I've got to ask, what is the secret sauce that makes an acquisition successful? I appreciate it's a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. I'm sure you've picked up a lot of experience there. Well, I've been very fortunate to uh, be mentored by some great leaders over my career and to learn from things that have gone well, as well as learn from things that didn't go quite as well as everyone hoped. I don't know that there is any one secret sauce for acquisitions, but there is a common thread that I've found over four or five of these that just gets reinforced every time. And it sounds a little bit like the repeat to the last question, but it really is about the people or the team. And there's two elements there that will allow an acquisition provided it made good sense at the you know at the highest level and you know you weren't mixing two things that really were not supposed to be together ever but usually that's not the case it's there's lots of dimensions whether they be financial or market driven that drive the acquisition need in the first place but the reasons why they can sometimes stall or not quite achieve the level of success that you want boils down to a misalignment in mission so between the two teams, not really being 100% aligned or, or understanding what is the common mission, and if that mission is one that had to evolve because of the of the acquisition, that's fine. And and the second point is once you bring teams together, making sure that you have strong alignment in roles. Like you can have very very uh, smart, motivated, creative people. But if you are just trying to fill in slots in a spreadsheet because you want to keep them, but they're not in a role that really excites them or they feel that they can be successful, it's going to cost you in terms of time, money, friction, and just, just a lot of headaches. And so 
being ruthlessly focused on alignment and mission, as well as ruthlessly focused on alignment and, and roles of your key people are the, are the two things that I've seen that will allow acquisitions to go well. Now, anybody that's following technology and the impacts that it's having on business will quickly learn that there seems to be a big obsession about cloud spending at the moment. But can you tell me a little bit more about how, in your opinion and your experience, that the rising cloud spending is not actually a global phenomenon and how some countries are actually seeking guidance and discussing cloud versus privacy laws at the moment? Well, it is very challenging. And, you know, the the we got started in the world of a public cloud and a SaaS offer hosted in the public cloud all the way back in 2011 when it was very nascent and and frankly when we were talked to the types of enterprises that we sell to today you know the the marriotts and the ebays and the microsofts of the world back in 2011 2012 2013 it was very unusual for a large it organization to wrap their arms around public cloud and say yeah let's go because of the issues you mentioned uh privacy and security being top of the line and of course, there were other concerns as well, but those those still remain very top top of the stack. We have seen a uh, a softening, if you will. We're seeing much broader adoption uh, of people thinking about uh, different ways of adopting the cloud. Many of them will involve hybrid strategies where they're leveraging some portion of uh, an application stack, maybe running in a public cloud provider combined with something running in their own private data center. And it really comes down to the types of apps and the types of data that the apps are supporting. There are some apps where unless you are willing to make an investment in the layers of the architecture and the security infrastructure to guarantee privacy and security, it might just be smarter and a, and a shorter lift to stay in your own private uh, infrastructure. But of course, that's changing as well, too, that the many of the cloud providers now are building their technology stacks that allow you to bring their technology into your private data center. So we see a, a big shift in that direction. And I think the second part of that answer really, really kind of goes to the, the geographic nature of cloud adoption. Certainly in North America, we've seen that start in the mid-market and has moved up market uh, very rapidly to, you know, we work with the world's largest companies today. We you know, AppNeta is very fortunate, you know, to have the the top three companies by market cap be customers. And we have uh, over 50 of the Fortune 100 um, as customers today. And so what we're seeing is an adoption maybe a little faster in North America and in certain certainly parts of Western Europe. But we are seeing the adoption wave coming in the mid-market and starting to move up market in the rest of the world as well. So a similar way, you're going to get a lot of businesses coming to you and asking for help. You're going to see a lot of trends and a lot of similarities there. But what are the biggest challenges that are facing today's workplace, especially when it comes to network performance monitoring solutions? Are, are there any trends that you're noticing? Yeah, definitely, Neil. You know, as I mentioned, we tend to focus on the on the the global 2000. You know, as a as kind of our focus market today, and some common things we see within that market. First and foremost, it's it's really surprising. Uh, to learn how many businesses really don't understand which business critical apps their knowledge workers are running in the remote office. They, they know what they're spending money on and they have an idea which apps they've signed contracts on. But in this day and age of SaaS and, you know, uh, shadow IT where anybody can swipe a credit card and get an app working, you know, overnight, the, the wide disparate use of, of business critical apps in the remote office is, is somewhat shocking. So the number one trend and the number one place we start with our value delivery is let's quickly automatically discover the business critical apps you're running and which users are running them and then align that. Is that what the business wants and needs? And then from there, we can start moving down to understanding which one of those apps do they need to understand and use your experience and the underlying network performance that supports it. The second dimension of that is is the remote office. You know, most technologies that are focused on performance have come from 10, 15, 20 years ago when, when the world of networks and the world of applications was very much a hub and spoke world where everything ran out of a data center and all connectivity from a remote office was backhauled back to that data center. And of course, the remote office today is largely independent where it can have its own direct connectivity to wherever the apps are hosted. So Understanding the performance from the remote office, which is where the knowledge workers are, is is another really interesting trend and one that, that plays really well for AppNeta. And then the last trend that's super interesting 
is the the idea that cheap isn't always better. And what I mean by that is, you know, networks are getting faster and the price per networks uh, are dropping, which is great. It does a lot of other enablement functions, but cheap isn't always good. And as we find customers in the remote office adopting strategies, uh, including something called DIA or direct internet access, they get lots of bandwidth, but the quality of that bandwidth isn't always up to the challenge of delivering the same type of performance they've expected over other types of more expensive network connectivity. So that's that's the third dimension, that cheap isn't always good. And from a user point of view, of course, we all expect that seamless Netflix-style experience across multiple devices, and we expect that as standard now. So are businesses rising to that challenge of creating and monitoring experiences across any app, network, or cloud all at the same time? Uh, in a word, no. Uh, it's a <laughs> desire. It's, yeah. it's something that we hear uh, You know, we, when we do our initial pain discovery with customers. It's a frequent theme that people will literally use that exact analogy. I, I want to have a seamless experience for all my business critical apps. I just want it to work. And when it doesn't work, I want to know before my users complain. And I want to be able to do something to and fix the problem before the business suffers. But, you know, the challenge is exactly what the second part of the last part of your question stated was the any app, any network, any cloud. When you mix those three together, it really points the problem to you have to understand the performance and the underlying network that enables that performance from the perspective of the end user, which means starting in the remote office and literally understanding that end to end. And it's it's really, really hard to do. And it's uh, it's something that we find businesses are extremely challenged with today. And as for yourself and the future, I mean, what excites you about the road ahead and everything that you're working towards with AppNetta right now? Well, that's a great question. You know, outside of the team, and I'm I'm fortunate to work with just the best team. This is my my fifth startup, and by far the strongest team I've ever worked with. So I'm extremely blessed there. But beyond the team, there's kind of four macro trends that that have us, frankly, positively giddy here at Fnetta. And you know, the trends kind of boil down to knowledge workers are really the secret to business success and growth. And these knowledge workers are tend to be more and more distributed than ever before. And they're also really, really expensive. The second trend is you know, the rapid, rapid decline in the price for high bandwidth connections. And if you think about what, what businesses used to pay for a network back in the year 2000, it was, it was somewhere around $1,500 per megabit of connectivity. And today you can get that exact same megabit for under $3. That's a, you know, that's a 99% drop in performance or in cost. And what that enables is businesses can now add bandwidth that allows them to do far more uh, rich applications, broader applications, and things that were just not technically possible because of network connectivity challenges. So that, that decreasing pricing has opened up a really wide field for all types of business applications. The third is automation. You know, we've, we've heard about automation forever in the world of IT. And just in the past three to five years, automation, whether it be DevOps, AppOps, SecureOps, you know, take your favorite ops acronym, the whole idea of automating and doing things faster with more agility is finally starting to take hold in the enterprise. And the reason that's exciting for us is that dynamism allows changes to happen faster in the IT estate, faster than ever before, which means now when there's a broad initiative to do Whatever form of transformation you want, to, you want to call out, it could be digital transformation, it could be application transformation, they can all happen in a reasonable time frame because we all know that when projects take a really, really long time, you just tend to get tired and, you know, yeah, let's go on to the next shiny nickel. And so automation is allowing these things to happen faster. And the fourth thing that, that's driving things for us is that Enterprises have multiple options today of where they want to run their apps. They can decide to, maybe I'm going to evolve my own private data center and make it into a virtual uh, cloud, and I'll do that using technology inside my own estate. Or maybe I want to leverage public cloud or mix those two together and build a hybrid cloud. Or I might just say, you know what? I really don't want to be in the data center business at all. I'm going to shift all my workload over to SaaS and let it be, quote, somebody else's problem. So that what that means is businesses can now decide what app I need, and they don't have to worry about, I have to build it myself. I have to run it myself. There are many options to, to build these apps. And when you take these four things of knowledge workers, declining price, automation, and broad application 
options and you mix all four of those together, it kind of creates a perfect storm for Apneta of expensive business workers depending upon expensive applications, all consuming these apps anywhere hosted over anywhere from four to five networks that no one entity can manage. And yet I have to be able to guarantee that those apps work and I have to be able to know when they don't and I have to be able to empower my knowledge workers. That's literally the center of the target where AppNeta lives. So we're pretty excited that these macro ten trends are are pointing towards something that's positive for us. Fantastic. Well, a huge thank you for coming on today. I am conscious we've covered a lot of ground and a lot of different topics. But say, if we do have anyone listening where your words have really resonated with them and they want to find out more about you guys, what you do, get, uh, visit you online, and maybe even contact a member of your team, what's the best way of doing that? Well, Neil, I think the best place to keep with us, we're, we are a very highly agile company and we, you know, we're releasing software updates every two weeks. And so the, the product as delivered as a SaaS service is constantly changing. The best way to keep up with AppNeta, frankly, is stay in touch with our blog. And if you go to www.appneta.com slash blog, you're going to see constant updates, typically a couple a week that will keep you apprised what we're thinking about, what we're doing, success stories, use cases. It's, it's really a, a rich treasure trove of information. But if you want to just do your kind of offline research and, and do some research at your own pace, our website itself has tons of deep information on use cases as well as the underlying technology that supports it. So you can do that self-paced research on your own. And when you're ready, just there's many places on the website for it to click contact me and uh, we'll get back to you quickly. We're happy to reach out to you when you're ready to talk to us. But the website's the best place to go. Fantastic. Well, I love what you guys are doing there. And I'm getting IT flashbacks here, and I've come across a lot of network performance monitoring solutions in my time. But from my point of view, I, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the only one that I know of that delivers deep, actionable end to end network performance data. But from the end user perspective, I think it's fantastic. But more than anything, just a big thank you for coming on and sharing that story with me today. Thanks, Neil. I really appreciate your time, and I appreciate your listeners' time as well. Have a great day. What a great guest Matt was there. And one of the things I forgot to bring up with him was that AppNetter is, yes, a leader in actionable end-to-end networks performance monitoring, but they also recently announced their placement as a visionary in the 2019 Gartner Magic Quadrant for network performance monitoring and diagnostics, where AppNetter was recognised for its ability to execute and completeness of vision. Make no mistake, AppNetter are certainly going places, and it's easy to see why, especially after listening to the value bombs that Matt was dropping onto today's tech podcast. But as I always say in every episode, this podcast is not about me. It's not even about the guest. This is a platform, and you play a big part on that platform too. So if you have anything that you would like to add to any of the topics that we discussed, why not send me a quick email, techblogwriter at outlook.com. And you can also tweet me, get me on Instagram, LinkedIn. Just look for Neil C. Hughes. I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. But right now, I'm off to record another episode, so you've got something to listen to tomorrow. So I better dash, but a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.